quite an effort in every sense of the direction. It's been quite a week this week as we went from putting the uh, beautiful historical marker on the original station on East Jefferson all the way to here to open our, our exhibit tonight. We're very excited about it. We're very excited that you're here, our supporters, our backers, our friends of the broadcast industry, to see just how your donations contributed to preserving very, very important, extremely important part of our, our background and our, and our history. We're honored to have the Executive Director and the Chief Executive Officer of the Detroit Historical Society. Would you please welcome Bob Murray. Thank you, Amir, and, and welcome everyone. And Amir, a special welcome to you. Amir's been here in some of our exhibits as one of the legends of broadcasting a few years ago, and, and it's always great to see her. You know, usually, um, first of all, welcome. I see so many familiar faces, and that's so great to see. Two free and accepted modern masons are the owners of WGPR, the fraternal order that was founded by Dr. William B. Banks, the founder of WGPR TV. So it's only fitting that we have Mr. James Dogan, the Supreme President, International Masons. Please come forward, Mr. Dogan, for opening remarks. Thank you, Ms. Mankinson. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Good evening, and thank all of you for coming. This has been an historic week. On Martin Luther King Day, historical marker was dedicated at 3146 East Jefferson, and that's the former location of WGPR TV 62. Tonight, we celebrate another remarkable occasion, thanks to the tireless efforts of the WGPR TV Historical Society. They set out to have an exhibition on the history of Channel 62, and now it is a reality. The International Free and Accepted Modern Masons Incorporated and Order of the Eastern Star has supported these efforts from the very beginning. And let me tell you why. They had a vision, they had a plan, and they had lots of passion. The vision was to establish a museum on the history of WGPR and its founder, Dr. William Vernon Bernard Banks, within the original studios of the station. The plan was to collaborate with the Destroyed Historical Society to install an exhibit in the Museum Community Gallery. And the passion came from a strong commitment to make the public aware. In 1975, the first black-owned and operated television station in the country went on the air. And it happened here in Detroit. Next up for the WGPR TV Historical Society is to transfer the exhibit you are about to review to the studios of WGPR at 3146 East Jefferson Avenue at the end of its run here in April. The International Free and Accepted Modern Masons, Incorporated Auto Visa Star, and WGPR Radio Inc. supports that vision and hope you will too. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Vice President of International Masons. We'd like to take a moment now. He's going to come up and acknowledge some of the guests here this evening and to welcome you again to the Detroit Historical Museum tonight. Thanks, Amir. Let me also thank all of you for being with us tonight on this historic occasion. And we have many alumni here from WGPR TV. We're only going to mention a couple of them now because others will be talked about later. But one of the persons who was, in the beginning, who kind of was at the helm of WGPR-TV, a young lady who has made history in her own right. She was the first African-American female to be the executive of a radio and TV station in the United States. She also was the daughter of the founder, or is the daughter of the founder, because <laughs> she's still here. <laughs> and that is Dr. Tanisha Gregory. Would you please stand?
This young lady made things happen at 3146 East Jefferson. And if you have the opportunity to speak with any of the alumni from WGPR-TV, they can tell you how she contributed to their lives and their careers. Thank you, Dr. Gregory. She's accompanied this evening by Dr. Carl Gregory and their daughter, Dr. Sheila Gregory. If you don't already own a copy of this, I would suggest that you acquire a copy of The Legacy of Dreams. This is a book that was authored by Dr. Gregory about her grandfather. We also have uh, Mr. Tim Kiska, the author, author on Detroit TV. He has written a couple of books recognizing the TV industry in Detroit, and he's a professor of the university at the University of, De of Detroit Dearborn, the University of Michigan Dearborn. Dr. Kiska, where is he? A person who's come a long way, all the way from Florida, to be here tonight. And that is James Bearden, who is a former production manager at WGPR TV. James. And representing the Honorable Brenda Jones, the council president for the city of Detroit, we have Miss Linda Wesley. So, we thank you all again for coming, and we hope you enjoy the evening. I know you will enjoy the exhibit. And it was always already asked that you come back and visit the museum often. But you know what keeps the museum working? What'd you say? Donations. <laughs> so, if you have some spare cash, the society can use it. God bless you all. of our program, former WGPR employee Karen Hudson Samuels, the executive director of the WGPR TV Historical Society, has some thought to share about why TV 62 is a story that's best told in a museum. Karen?
museum fabricator. See, I picked up a few museum terms. We feel a fabricator. <laughs> we're with Wall Street Productions, and they did a terrific job. So we're, we're very proud, and uh, we hope that you're inspired, that you become educated and learn why this particular history matters. Thank you. too soon. Anybody who's at the historical marker dedication knows that. I want to bring forward Mr. Joe Spencer. Joe has been the president, continues to be the president, of the WGPR TV Historical Society. And um, as he comes forward, I'd like the people who have contributed to this exhibit to raise your hands. I'll call you up, but you know who you are. Kim Ryan, where are you? Kim Ryan has done for our, our Kickstarter campaign, he did a video. We're going to run it without his assistance and help. Is R.J. Watkins here? R.J. Watkins. I know Matt Morris is here. And oh yeah, Matt. That's right. There he is. Okay. And uh, yes. And he donated costumes from his, his time on the scene. And I hope I haven't overlooked this guy. Whatever we had in need came forward to help us and, and contributed greatly to this whole project. And now Joe Spence, and, and oh, how could I forget Carl Gregory, one of our more animated, animated members of our committee who contributed so many pictures um, and, and memorabilia from the family. So we're so grateful. We couldn't tell the story without you, Carl. And you haven't been to a meeting to been to a meeting with Carl Gregory, so. <laughs> reason to join the membership of the WGPR Historical Society. With that, Joe Spencer was my mentor in WGPR, where I had my first career in broadcasting, and I think he touched a lot of people in this room in terms of helping them develop their talents, and he played a key role in keeping us on track and going for the last couple of years. So I'm going to turn it over to Joe Spencer. Thank you, Karen. It really is an exciting night for me and for everyone here, particularly those people who have contributed. Um, my job today is to introduce our special guest who's come all the way from California to be with us. But before I do that, I, I want to uh, I want to just give you a couple of thoughts. <laughs> Number one, this uh, effort that we made to uh, memorialize the WGPR experience it's just the beginning, as uh, Bob Burry has said, as Karen has said. Uh, but we have an even stronger mission, uh, a more long-lasting mission, and that is not only to move this exhibit that you're going to see to 3146 East Jefferson, but we also want to expand that experience so that it begins to look at some of the other great broadcasters in this city. Yes, WGPR was the first black-owned television station. But this city has produced a lot of great black broadcasters. People like Ernie Durham, Martha Jean the Queen, Al Allen. A lot of really good people. But before I get into that, and, and, and I just say this, I, I hope that after you see the experience, after you go upstairs, uh, you know, somebody asked me and said, uh, Joe, they look around and say, I didn't know WGBR did all this. I said, That when you uh, when you finish looking at it, that it garners your support, uh, that you'll tell people about it, that you'll even maybe give us a little financial support as we try to make our transition to the new location. And realizing that if you do, you are now beginning to help build the third cultural institution in this uh, community that's dedicated to the efforts of African Americans. We have the Charles H. Wright, we have the Motown. And then we'll have the William V. Banks International uh, Mason's Communication Museum. And I I just want to take time to uh, give special recognition to Ms. Karen, would you come up, please? Uh, I want to present you with this plaque. You know, Karen Winter. But,
Kirk County, Hudson Samuels, Executive Director of WTBR Historical Society. In appreciation for your dedication, vision, and leadership, and bring to life America's Broadcasting Pioneer Exhibit, the history of WGBR TV 2016. Congratulations. very nice and uh, there were a lot of believers out there and which really helped. You believed in the purpose and cause and the vision and that was a great motivator for me to be persistent and continue on this path and the support of so many people has made all the difference. So, thank you. Great job. Great job. It is now my pleasure to introduce our special guest. The young lady that I'm going to introduce to you all, most of you know, uh, but what you don't know is that she got her start in WGPR. She's a world star. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about her. She got her start in WGPR. She's also a Grammy award winning, not a Grammy, any award winning journalist. Uh, she's a best selling book author, has a book that's dedicated to young women called Exactly As I Am. Uh, she was for 16 years the host of Access Hollywood. Uh, she did a lot of work on, a lot of work on the red carpet. Uh, she's hosted the uh, Rose Bowl Parade. Uh, she's uh, been the person uh, introducing people on the red carpet for many of the red carpet, the Grammys, the uh, Oscars, and so forth. Uh, she is one of our shining stars. Uh, very talented young lady, all the way from California. Please give a warm welcome to Ms. Sean Robinson. You said Grammy. I was like, y'all don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much. That was such a wonderful introduction. And I appreciate everything that you have done for me and my career and being a role model and somebody who's helped me uh, throughout the years of my first days, early days at WGPR. So thank you. Thank you so much. And Karen, thank you so much for all of this. It's absolutely, not, all, well, not here, but upstairs. Um, and Mr. Dogan, thank you so much um, for everything that you, uh, Mr. Howell, thank you. For inviting me here. I'm not going to talk long, but I'm going to speak from my heart. Uh, I really want you to go upstairs and see the exhibit because it's actually absolutely wonderful. Joe, after I, I hadn't talked to Joe in I think maybe like 20 years, and he called me up uh, or emailed me and he said, Hey, we're doing this thing. I'm like, What are you doing? Okay, GB, okay, and it's true. Okay, what? Okay, okay, that sounds that sounds cool. And um, when you're being a part of history, you don't realize it at the time, but then now you're looking back and we realize what history we were making. Uh, I have been covering uh, Hollywood for the last 16 years, and it, this is really interesting that this is happening now because there's so much di a co uh, conversation about diversity in Hollywood and um, us not being included and not even being all to the party, not being asked to the table at all. And there was a, you probably heard about a, an actress who, uh, former actress, who, uh, of color, black, African-American, who said on Fox News that um, we need to do away with shows like, or channels, uh, networks like BET because that's the only way to get rid of segregation. Okay. Um, I wish she were here tonight, so we could, so we could have a conversation about why this matters. Um, I went to Spelman College in Atlanta. Historically, historically black college, as you know, Morehouse, Morehouse College, uh, Clark uh, College, and uh, so we had we had um, we had Coleman Young. We created this uh, 
uh, talk show uh, called Strictly Speaking. We had Coleman Young. Do you all remember? We had Coleman Young come down to the station, and everybody was wondering how did you to get Coleman Young, the mayor, to come down to you know to the station and, and talk to us and talk to a live studio audience. A lot of people wondered that, and that was because you know we were putting out the stories about our community that mattered. You know, we we were in touch with who? Wait. There's a DJ, some of our DJs, WGBR DJs, what? Um, Rocket Ranch, Rocket Ranch. We had Prince coming through there. Everybody, everybody stopped by WGPR because it was the place to be. Nat Morris, with Nat, don't try to leave. <laughs> Let me just say this, Nat, you are just a part of our childhood. You were our Don Cornelius. Thank you. 